All right, Shalom. Before we begin this lesson, we want to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka, Kodash. We want to give a double honors to the elders and the apostles out there, chiefly of Great Millstone, where us two learnt this truth from. Okay, we want to give a Shalom to you sisters that are in order, you aquaf out there, man. Okay, the ones that are being submissive to their own husbands, good keepers at home, teaching your kids right things, teaching them not to grow up to be thoughts and homosexuals and all these things that are against the laws of the Most High. You know, training up a child in the way they should go. Okay, so Shalom to you sisters. You're valuable in this earth. We need more sisters like you, okay? So Shalom to you. And we also want to give a Shalom to the people out there that may look like these other nations, but their seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, making them an Israelite. Because like we say time and time again, this truth has nothing to do with the color of your skin, okay? This isn't a black power movement we're in, okay? Because if you go on the internet and type up Hebrew Israelites, you're going to find all kind of videos and articles demonizing us, making it seem like we're some kind of hate group, like we're involved in some kind of black power movement, or like you have to be a dark-skinned person in order to be a Hebrew Israelite. Okay? And he, being a Hebrew Israelite isn't anything to do with the religion either. Okay? Being a Hebrew Israelite is to be of the seed line of the Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible, which we know ourselves to be in these end times, okay? And anybody that understands this truth and keeps the Most High's laws and that their spirit resonates with our spirit and they're coming in the right name and the correct doctrine, you, you are an Israelite, okay? So we do these lessons for you, okay? We don't do these lessons for everybody, okay? This truth is exclusive. It's only for the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of you so predominantly of you so-called blacks, you so-called Latinos, and you so-called Native Americans. All right, so Shalom. And the topic of this lesson today is about the biblical famine that's coming. Okay, we're about to experience a food shortage in this world. Okay, and this is a soon coming prophecy and it's spoken, at, uh, it's spoken about throughout a lot of the scriptures, okay, which you're not going to learn about this in your Christian church. We don't want to get it twisted. Just because we're reading out of the Bible does not mean we are Christians. Don't mean we have anything to do with Christianity. We are not affiliated with Christianity, okay? As a matter of fact, we oppose Christianity, okay? And we teach the correct doctrine which is ordained by the Most High in these end times, okay? For that the truth will be declared throughout this earth in the end times, okay? Because now is the time when the seals are loosed and the truth is being declared, okay? So, you know, we're here to show you what the Bible really says. And the topic of this lesson, like I said, is involving the famine that's coming. So if you take heed to these scriptures that we're about to bring out, then, you know, you have a chance of being spared from what's coming. You know, it's a serious business we're involved in, you know. These videos that we make on YouTube, hey, it's not entertainment. It's not, we're not doing this for vainglory. We're not doing this for money. We don't get money off of YouTube videos, okay. And this truth that we're speaking from the Holy Scriptures is only available for a short period of time. So you better get it while it's hot, because the scriptures do state that there's also coming a famine of the word, where you won't be able to hear the true doctrine, the true words of the Lord, okay? And that's mentioned in the book of Amos 8 and 11. I've got it right here if you want me to read it. You can, you can bring that out. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the book of Amos chapter 8 verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, say Yahweh power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor I thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. Verse 12, it says, And they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. 
Verse 13 says, In that day shall their fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Okay, so, you know, this is basically saying that not only is there going to be a famine of food and water, right here it's specifically focusing on the famine of the word. There is going to be a, a famine of food, which we're going to prove through scripture in a few moments. Okay, but let's just quickly touch bases on this famine of the word that's coming. You're not always going to have the liberty to receive this truth. When the prophets and the teachers that the Most High set up in these end times are taken off the streets and off the internet, then there's no hope for salvation anymore. Okay? Salvation is not always going to be available. Okay? And there are plenty of scriptures to back that up. Okay? So, like we said earlier, you need to get it while it's hot. Because the door of the ark is spiritually closing to the point where there is no salvation anymore. That's when the elect are sealed, the 144,000 chosen, the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, that's when the elect is sealed, meaning that nobody else can make it. That mean means that the ones that were ordained from the beginning have come into their lot and have come back to the Most High, come back in their right minds and fleed from the ways of this destructive kingdom. Okay, and cleaved back to their God. Okay. Yeah, and you'll notice as well that um, a lot of brothers' channels are being flagged and channels taken down, and you know the the they're making it harder for this word to go out. That's right. So you know, my best advice would be to to get as much knowledge and understanding as you can while you still can. Because uh -huh. once it's gone, that's it. And the scriptures do state that knowledge and wisdom will be the stability of thy times. And it's talking about the times we're living in now. Okay, because if you ain't got the knowledge of these scriptures, then you're going to fall victim to what's coming. Okay, you won't have the most highest covering. Yeah. You fall victim to all the lies that are going to be told. Mm -hmm. You're going to be told to trust in the government, and the government's the ones that's going to be, you know, out there doing all the wickedness. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the people that are in charge. You're going to be this easily deceived, you know. You're going to follow the masses. You're going to be led to the slaughter like all these sheeple that are roaming around us right now, okay? Walking the streets, obeying everything they hear on television, okay? And call it television programming for nothing. That's right, man, programming, you know. It's right there in your face, but only the wise are going to understand what's really going on in this world. This world ain't to be taken, this life you've been born into, man, it's not to be taken lightly. you got to ask yourself why we exist, what's the meaning of life, why we're here. Don't just be one of these fools that just goes along to get along, copies what everyone else is doing, thinking that they know what they're doing, the blind leading the blind, and then just, you know, going to work, coming home, crack a beer and watching the football, man, and not thinking about anything else that's important. Okay? you got ch A lot of you have children in this world. Do you not care about the future of your children? You know? Not that there is much future left in this world, because we're at the end. But you got to think to yourself, I mean, what kind of a world is it going to be if the world was to go on another 100 years or so? What kind of a world do you think your children would grow up in? Do you not care about that? A lot of you think that, you know, what can I do about it? You know, you feel powerless. We get that. You know, these people ruling over us are, are you know, they, they have a stronghold on us. But, you know, you people need to seek knowledge. Seek what's really going on, okay? Don't just be a waste of space, as the elites call you a useless eater, Okay. You know, just to also touch on top of that as well, like we've been living in a society that's made us so comfortable. Like there's no sort of thought that goes into a lot of things. Like, you know, you when you feel hungry, you just go to the supermarket, buy a bunch of groceries or, or shop, you know, get some stuff off the shelf, put it in your trolley, mm -hmm. drive home, cook it up, and then you're good. What happens when that supply chain breaks down? You know, where, where do you go to get food? Where do you go to get water? You know, how, how do you survive, you know, 
you got to think about what you would do in a situation where you know this thing these things run up you know and and the scriptures speak about you know having a famine but there isn't going to be uh, much of anything you can do because when there's no food and no water or anything like that people ain't going to sit there and work together they're going to panic they're going to panic and it's going to be all, all chaos and pandemonium out there in the streets that's right man you know people take things for granted man I bet most of you wake up, you don't even thank the Most High for the life that you were given, you know, for the fact that you even woke up, or for the fact that you're healthy, or for the fact that you're fed, <clears throat> the fact you got a roof over your head, all these basic things that we take for granted, man. Do you not understand that's a gift of the Most High, you know? But what facts are you giving him, you know? The way to show that you love the Most High is to keep his laws. And the scriptures make that plain and clear. But a lot of you think that all you have to do is say with your lips that you love you love the Lord. I love you, God. No, it don't work that way, man. Okay, you got to show through your actions. All right. But enough on that, man. I got a precept here I want to bring out. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter five, and I'm gonna start at verse one. It says, "Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold." The days shall come when they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, meaning killed in a great number. And the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith. So basically that's going into the fact that there's we're entering into a time of great death. Okay, you lot out there that have never even seen a dead body. I mean, even me personally, I've never physically seen a dead body with my physical eyes but that's that's going to be the norm soon okay and the scriptures make that plain and clear okay and we're going to bring these scriptures out to prove to you that this is no lie you know and when you see these things come to pass then you're going to know that a prophet had been among you okay so you know it's really it'd be really wise for you to not dismiss this video as a joke or as um, something that isn't to be taken serious, you know, something to be taken lightly, or something that, you know, maybe you're just not sure what to make of it, you know. Do your research, man, you know, because everything we're bringing out is in the Holy Scriptures, and this is not our private interpretation, you know. It'd be wise if you're confused as to what we're bringing out to go over it for yourself, and to look over these things to see if it's true. Now I'm going to read verse 2 here. So this is 2 Ezra 5 and 2. It says, But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. Okay? So we're getting ready to enter into a time where people are going to be taken in a great number. They're going to be killed in a large number. You're going to get used to seeing death. And we're going to explain why this is in a few moments, okay, when we bring out some more scriptures, all right? Because this time of great death is going to be caused by multiple things, you know? And one of the major things that's going to cause great death is this soon coming famine that's about to hit, okay? And stocking up on food is only going to give you temporary relief. It's like when you see a homeless man on the streets and you give him a bit of change, that's only going to hold him off for that day. You need that protection that's going to cover you for a lifetime, man. Okay? That's right. And uh, man's goings are of the Lord anyway. So how do you know storing up all that food ain't going to, you know, end up with somebody else anyway? Mm, that's you know, right. The Lord wants one of the, the hopeful elect to get that food. And you ain't part of the hopeful elect. You st you're saving up for him. Or, yes, sir. You know? So, because... The Most High always protects his people. That's right. You've got to rely on the Most High. Mm -hmm. Don't put your trust in man. You know, don't put your trust in, in your own abilities. It's all about the Most High. Mm. You know, you keep the commandments and, and pray that you're part of the elect and, and pray that the Most High is going to protect you in those days. Mm -hmm. You know, the scriptures say, whoever perish being innocent or where were the righteous cut off? You know, the righteous are going to be protected, man. The Most High never forsakes his righteous, okay? It also says that during a famine, you know, 
His servants will eat. His servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. His servants will rejoice for joy of heart. You know, this is roughly paraphrasing, man, but hey, scriptures say that too. All right. So the next scripture I want to bring out is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16, and I'm going to start at verse 33. It says, The virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. Okay, because we're entering into a time of great death, where people are going to be taken in a large number. Okay? It says here in verse 34, in the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. So like I said, it's not only going to be the famine, although that's going to be a major part in why people die in these end times. Okay, but people are going to die in the wars. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be shipped off to Afghanistan or drafted into the military. Okay, because when you look into the definition of war, it can go into these protests, these riots and stuff, man. Okay, because things are about to get really ugly. You see what's going on in Colombia right now? The police are gunning down people in the streets, man. These peaceful, apparent peaceful protesters, you know. I'm sure it gets a bit rowdy at times, but, you know, they're protesting because they're not happy. You know, the scriptures state that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And that's what's happening right now. You've got the wicked ruling, the Job 9.24s, okay? They're ruling the earth, the elites, okay? The wicked. And no one's happy because the wicked are in authority right now. The wicked bear rule. So the people are mourning. This is why you have protests and uproars of the people all over the world right now. No one's happy, you know? But... You're about to really be unhappy <clears throat> soon to come. You know, the yeah, this mo the Most High is about to turn it up a notch, man. Okay? And these, the Most High uses the wicked as his sword, the scriptures state. So the good and the bad comes from the Most High, but he uses people as vessels to do his will. Okay? The Most High is not all love. And this is what you'll find out. This is what you'll learn in the Christian church, that God is good all the time. Nah, man, he flooded the earth, men, women, children, animals, okay, newborn babies, you know, no one was spared, man. The Most High does what he has to do to fulfill his will so that we can have a brighter future, you know, for the greater good, should I say, you know. And this famine that's coming is ultimately orchestrated by the Most High. But, you know, these, these devils that rule this world, they think that they're in control. They think that it's them because they are the wicked. But the Most High is the ultimate puppet master. He's the one that's pulling the strings behind the scenes. I know a lot of you have heard of the Illuminati or the shadow government. Well, there's somebody above them, okay? You know, the Most High is the king of terrors, man. He's the king over all the earth, all right? All right, so now I'm going to bring out the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, and I'm going to start at verse 17, okay? And it says, woe is me, woe is me. And woe means death and destruction, okay? So woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days? And this is the prophet Ezra speaking right here. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, okay? Because now we're living in the time of the beginning of sorrows. It says and great mournings, the beginning of famine, okay? And you lot ain't experienced famine yet. So this is why we're saying that this time that we're speaking of, that this is speaking of, is, hap is about to happen now. Brace yourself. And there's only one way to get right. It's coming back to the laws of the Most High, man. Keeping his laws to the best of your ability and calling on the right name, which is Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. Okay? A lot of people are going to die in the wars. The bridegrooms are going to mourn, like I brought out earlier. Okay? 
it says, and the powers shall stand in fear. That's these elites, okay? The gods of this world, because the word God just means power. It says, and the powers shall stand in fear, and the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Okay? Because Ezra knew he was going to be back. But that's a whole other topic, man. Okay? He knew he was going to be here in those times. Verse 19, it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. So they're sent of the Most High as scourges for amendment. Okay, to mend you, to get you right, man, to correct you. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Okay, you people are going to lollygag and be in la la land and be good old sheep all like you always do. Okay, we know that we're sitting here talking to the wind. You know, we, we don't have a lot of subscribers, you know, you got people doing the, the nay nay and all that, man. They get like thousands of subscribers and views and this and that. But when people, when it's dealing with real life stuff that could save your life, people don't want to know, man. They ain't trying to come out their comfort zone, you know what I mean? It says uh, in verse 21, it says, behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case and even then shall evils grow upon the earth sword famine and great confusion because a lot of you ain't gonna know why the heck everybody why is all this madness happening these lockdowns and this change this you know you lot you are begging to go back to what you call normality which was ma absolute madness what's going on in this world the way they're running it you know, that ain't normality, man. You lot have no vision. You don't know what normality is, okay? You're so far out of touch of what's real, of reality, that you actually want to go back to the way things were, thinking that's great. You know, you should embrace the fact that this whole kingdom is being shut down and that there's a better kingdom coming, man, where the true rulers of this world are going to be ruling, okay? The Israelites, you know, most high willing, you're looking at two of them. All right. Come man. So I'm going to leave that there. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I've got a scripture here that I want to bring out in uh, the book of Matthew in the 24th chapter. So um, the the 24th chapter of Matthew is when Yahweh is speaking to his disciples about uh, and tells them about the, the future events that's going to take place. So I'm going to start at Matthew 24 verse 3. And it says, uh, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came un unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when these, uh, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Because they, they were inquiring about, you know, when he returns and, and what's going to happen around those times. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And that's going into your Christian churches. Mm. You know, they came with Caesar Borgia, or, or the, the Catholics, when they were sailing the seas and enforcing uh, Christianity and that image mm. on, on everybody on the earth. Mm -hmm. you know? And there, there was laws that, that they put in place that anybody that don't worship be put to death. You know what I mean? Like, they, they were... Going, uh, going ham with that, you know what I mean? And uh, it says, um, verse 6, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And that's what you're seeing in the news. You're seeing a lot of, you know, uh, proxy wars, like you got um, uh, Israel uh, going up against you know, Syria and and Iran. Uh, you got America going up, you know, against Russia and China. You got, you know, all these nations are rising up against each other. You know, and these are the rumors of war. But it says, be not troubled. Or Yahweh Shai is saying, be not troubled. But these things must come to pass. You know, but the end is not yet, because it ain't the end, it's just the beginning. You know? 
uh, verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Now that's the point that we wanted to get to, is the famines. Yahweh Shai is telling us of future events, and there's going to be famines, and this is what we're seeing now. When you switch on the news and you're seeing all these uh, supply chain breakdowns, you know, like fishing, you know, uh, fishermen in, in uh, uh, the coast of, of England, between England and France, they got them fishing waters, and they used to share it before uh, Brexit come, and now Brexit's come about, they're disputing who gets to fish in those waters, because they, they don't share them anymore. So they had uh, naval ships, you know, sort of patrolling to make sure it didn't escalate. You know, these, these are your rumors of wars, the, the supply chain's breaking down, you had the uh, the big uh, tanker that, that got trapped in, in this, uh, that canal. The cargo uh, ship. Yeah, the cargo mm -hmm. vessel got, got trapped, you know, and then you got the the lockdown, which caused everybody to, to be forced to be at home, mm -hmm. and the shops weren't you know, trading. And you have a lot of businesses shutting down. That's right, and, and like the, the, the sea ports were closed as well. So it, it ruined a lot of the supply chain, okay? This is an important conversation, so let's have it. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast. And I want to first talk, uh, talk about the shipping situation where we saw that headline, Brace for Impact. The U.S. import Demand is still rising. The container shortage is persisting. Record port volumes have not alleviated this. And while the line of ships that's been waiting to dock off the west coast in the ports there is now less than 20, there's some progress in emptying the queue there. Um, it's still tremendous the amount of damage that's gone on. And the backlog and the expense for actually securing container storage has only continued to increase. So uh, some of these analysts are saying things like, quote, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I, I just want to remember to frame these quotes by the reality that there are already shortages of many consumer goods, that we already have a complete shutdown of the semiconductor industry and anything that relies on that with car factories unable to produce cars because we can't get the chips. And those integrated circuits are in a lot of things. You already know this. You already know that this whole thing has been set up to falter. This is a generations long plan in the making of the depopulation agenda, and they've just pulled the rug out now. This is that's that's why I want to have this conversation, so that we can really appreciate the gravity of where we are right now. The data shows that despite this deluge of inbound cargo, uh, the import demand is not abating. In fact, it's increasing. It's getting worse. Importers are trying to catch up. Market capacity is in most cases oversold. No realistic improvement is on the horizon. In fact, it looks like it's just going to get worse, leading to more significant disruptions. Again, when you disrupt the supply chain, everything downstream from it falters. We're talking about farmers who can't get parts for their tractors, which further fuels the... Uh, breakdown of the food supply. We're talking about, we've already seen warnings of gas shortages, getting, uh, some people already are finding pumps empty, and that's expected to get worse through the summer when they said about 30% of the gas supply won't be available. In other words, only two thirds of it will be. So apparently there's been a pipeline cyber attack. It's a gas shortage on the East Coast. And of course, as usual, there's mass panic, hysteria, traffic backed up for miles to get gas, pandemic part two, stay tuned East Coast, Florida chicken in. Then you've got uh, verse 8, it says, uh, or oh, so lucky, I'm going to read verse 7 again. It says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. Now, uh, these are uh, diseases, uh, and earthquakes in diverse places. So you've got all these things happening, and then verse 8 says, All these are the beginning of sorrows. So this is just the beginning of what we're seeing, but the end is, is close. Okay? And these are the words of Yahweh Shai. And there's, there's more that goes into it. If you read Matthew, the, the 24th chapter, you'll, you'll get a lot of meat and, and understanding about these future events. I won't, I won't go into it just for the sake of time, but 
you know. Wow. As a matter of fact, let me let me just read, jump down to verse twenty-four because that's a that's a, a, a fire scripture. It says, uh, "For there shall arise false uh, anointed and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders." In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But it's not possible. It ain't possible to deceive the elect. And the elect are seeing these things. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're calling them out to, to the people out there to warn them, to give them warning. Mm -hmm. But if a lot of people don't want to hear that. They want to say, oh, well, you know, you're a conspiracy theorist. Because that's a, a term that they throw around is conspiracy theorist. Because it allows you to, to dismiss what somebody is saying. It's, it's, crazy instead of true that's a, that's a buzzword that they come up with to try and uh, demonize people that think for themselves that's right that research and see what's going on you know but then months down the road or, or years down the road you see uh, see that they were correct that's it man it happens all the time but then yeah. by that that point they're they're sort of like oh well you know i, I did sort of have, a, have an idea but it's like well you you were saying conspiracy there is mm. uh not too long ago, mm -hmm. and now you're, you're sort of starting to see the bigger picture, but yet you're still not taking heed to, to what we're saying. So, I just want to touch uh, basis on the scriptures in uh, Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 22 and verse 23, and then I have a precept that I want to bring out relating to that, man, because these go hand in hand, and it's all relating to this famine that's coming. So this is 2nd Ezra 16 verse 22, it says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. You know, that's when people are going to be taken in a large number, man, like it said earlier. It says, And the, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Okay, so, you know, you might escape the hunger by stocking up on a bit of food, all of you that are super rich out there and can afford to stock up on large amounts of food, you know, the Most High will give you that, you know, you'll, you'll be able to escape the hunger, but the sword is going to still destroy you after that, you know. One way or another, we are entering into a time of great death. They want this earth depopulated, man, okay, and that's going to happen one way or another. You know, ultimately by the most high, but these elites, they think they're pulling the strings, man. And this is their plans they have for you masses out there, okay? If you haven't heard about it, you need to Google the Georgia Guidestones, okay? Because this has been written in stone for a long time, how they want to depopulate the earth and maintain it under, what, like 500 million people? Yeah. Yeah, man. So... And this is verse 23, it says, And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, meaning bury them, you know, give them a proper burial. For the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be cast down. That's going to be, you know how it was when we had them lockdowns and stuff, man, the cities were cast down. You know, you had stores closed everywhere, you had nobody walking the streets, okay? And right here where it says that, um, the earth shall be wasted, you know, that's because ain't nobody going to be tilling the land, man, you know, people, you aren't going to see people doing these jobs where they maintain the streets and stuff, it's going to be overgrown with wild bushes and stuff, man, have you ever seen that movie I Am Legend, they don't make movies like that for no reason, okay, a lot of these movies are based on, you know, on, on the Bible, man, on the truth, on these scriptures, okay? So a precept to that I want to bring out is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 16. And if you're taking notes, you might want to write this as a precept, okay? It says, And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. I ain't talking about the land of Jerusalem, okay? It's talking about where the Israelites are dwelling right now, which is America, it says, because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, okay? Like it said here, that they'll be cast out in the streets as dung. It says that in the book of uh, 2nd Ezra 16 and uh, 23. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, 
and there shall be no man to comfort them. It's saying the same thing right here, but it's letting you know when it's talking about comfort them that it's talking about bury them, give them a proper burial. This is why we're supposed to read these scriptures precept upon precept to get the understanding, okay? Because the scriptures also state, through thy precepts I get understanding. You're not supposed to read this Bible from front to back and think you understand it. And you're also not going to get the true understanding if you're not reading from the Apocrypha, okay? Don't let anybody demonize you about that book, man, and make it sound like that book ain't relevant, man. Okay, because this book is incomplete without that apocrypha. These are 14 books that they took out because they don't want you knowing the full truth. And there's a lot of prophecy in this apocrypha. You can get you one cheap on eBay, man, or Amazon. Okay, really cheap, man. And they'll come quick too.